morning, everyone. I'm going to talk to you about a retirement project, a retirement for two lifetime biologists, people who've worked in the Karoo most of their careers and on their retirement decided that they were going to use the knowledge they'd gained over the years and take a big risk, which they couldn't have taken without Rufford funding and inspiration from many other people throughout the world and over time. The title of this talk on your program is The Need for Seed, and you'll see why that is. It's also about why we should restore unproductive Karoo rangeland. And so first I will talk about the Karoo environment, briefly introduce you to what the Karoo is, talk about how it was damaged in the past, why it's going to be much more damaged in the future, and what I think we can do and have to do about it and the opportunities that a bad scenario can offer in the future. Well, the Karoo is a big, dry area that takes up about 30% of South Africa. It's so dry and so generally unproductive that you need 5 to 10 hectares to support a single sheep. And yet, these stony plains have an incredible peace and beauty. They have a value for people. They have led to the development of extraordinary forms of life. After rain, they are extremely beautiful and inspiring. Most of the time, they take courage to live in. But they also are a source of employment, a source of fiber, a source of meat, and they have supported the population of South Africa in many ways over millions of years. The life forms in the Karoo are often extraordinary. Tiny little plants using nooks and crannies, storing their own water, and surviving these harsh conditions. The animals, too, are quite extraordinary. Look, for example, at this grasshopper. You'll have to look twice if you're going to tell the difference between the grasshopper and the stone. Perfectly cryptic and adapted. Or this amazing way out, over-the-top lizard showing off to the ladies. And birds that don't nest in trees because there aren't any, but cunningly hide their nests and their eggs on the ground. So what's happened to this in the past? Well, land use, including grazing, has nibbled away the valuable, palatable plants in many cases, converting it to weeds. That speckworm you have in the little tin on part of this picture has disappeared and left behind weeds. In other places, the ground has been trampled clear of vegetation or ploughed for subsistence agriculture, leaving behind thoroughly useless, poisonous plants. The bare ground erodes, and even game animals, which people might think are part of the ecosystem and easy to manage, have proved a real challenge, because once contained by fences, they can destroy the felt just as easily as domestic livestock. And trees brought in by agriculture to offer shade and to offer forage, have once escaped from their own countries, form dense thickets which shade out the grazing, and when they are eventually removed to save our water, they leave nothing behind. But now let's think about the future. The future goes beyond the problem of overuse by agriculture. The future is about increasing numbers of people, outstripping the natural resources, and when there are more people, there's a need for energy, for cooking, for heating. There's a need for materials, for building houses. And there's a need for jobs and money. Where do these things come from? Well, the Karoo has at least some of the solutions. Big business and government is looking at sources of diamonds, of uranium for energy, of gas for energy, of rare minerals, and of titanium, zirconium, and others in the Karoo. But the Karoo is a fragile environment. Even the prospecting 
for these materials damages the ground, strips away the vegetation, crushes the animals. A little road made by a prospecting truck will still remain 37 years later, clearly visible. And what if mining really takes place? The vegetation will be removed as it has on the titanium mines of the West Coast. And with a huge input of dollars, of brands and effort, and much growing of plants and planting of plants, eventually vegetation will come back. But that vegetation will have lost probably forever many of the plants and animals and many of its values to humanity that it had before the mining. Here's a gypsum mine, the same story. So why should we bother to restore a landscape that's so difficult to restore? Well, there's the law and there's morality leaving something to the next generation. There's also tremendous opportunities for research and employment and telling people about the values of nature. We know far more about what's beyond the planet. We know more about other solar systems than we do about how to repair the damage we make to our environment. Research on repair of natural environments brings young people, brings older people, brings people from different persuasions into the field and they learn by doing. They try out different ways to repair the damage and in this way the jobs they do are meaningful. Collecting seeds is an important job. We need seeds in order to return vegetation to the land. One can pick seeds from nature or one can grow seeds and it's very satisfying to see an orchard become golden with flowers and then yield seeds which you know will be used in a positive way. And working with plants and outside and with nature is very empowering. Once you have the knowledge as our team members will say, you can teach it to other people and inspire them too. Working in restoration forces you to work with people who have jobs that you would not normally encounter. So biologists find themselves working with big business, with engineers, with prospectors, with philosophers, with economists. And in this way, they can tell other people about the value of natural ecosystems. Our employees feel completely confident telling a group of business people about the value of seed because they understand it. I feel confident telling road workers about the pollination of a rare pelargonium and they understand that. And Richard explained why a parasitic plant should be important in the environment. Mirai shows that the Karoo has many medicinal plants which can be lost through mining and which have a great value to people. So in conclusion, the Karoo has been damaged. It will be damaged much more. We have to do rehabilitation, but beyond being compelled to do it and beyond all the challenges of trying to put vegetation and animals back in such a harsh environment. There's an enormous opportunity out there. It is an opportunity that brings young people, poor and rich, all sorts of people together into the open to face the challenge of how to give the next generation as beautiful and useful environment as we've had ourselves. We really hope, since we are no longer young, that there are many young entrepreneurs up there who are ready to take up this challenge. Thanks.